The primary mode of transportation in the late 19th century was through the railroads. Although they were the backbone of America, trains still required individual tracks to be laid on each new route, a long and expensive project. Inventors were looking for a way to avoid that by traveling above the rails rather than on them. Early adaptations of a flying machine failed due to a lack of power, over complex systems, and overweight designs. Inventors had wild ideas of what could fly, but most of them ended in failure. Many people tried to replicate the flapping wings of a bird, and all attained the same result, failure. Even early launch systems seemed to be of no help. It almost seemed as if man were never meant to fly. That was until the Red Brothers stepped into the picture. The brothers had a great set of tools to help them achieve the dream of flight. They owned a bicycle shop, which gave them knowledge of lightweight building techniques. To get enough power, they built a lightweight 25 horsepower engine that far exceeded the power to weight ratio of anything of its day. It took yearly trips to Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, where constant winds and soft landing areas were ideal testing conditions. Eventually they were able to get airborne, for short periods at first, but soon trips of a few miles were commonplace. With their success, others began improving upon the original design, but the invention wasn't seen as much more than a toy until the outbreak of the First World War. Aircraft in the form of Zeppelins were used at the beginning of the war to scout and later bomb targets. Germany kept London in a state of panic by performing regular bombing raids. Airplanes were soon outfitted with guns to shoot down the Zeppelins and end the reign of terror. Both sides began sending up aircraft equipped with guns, starting the first air-to-air -air combat, known as dogfighting. Countries rushed to improve their planes to save lives and control the skies. Many pilots became famous for their kills in battle. One such pilot, the Red Baron, pictured here, accounted for over 70 Allied kills. It still earns him fame today. When the war ended, many pilots took their newly acquired skills and began pushing the limits of aviation. Charles Lindbergh, a World War I vet, became the first person to fly solo across the Atlantic Ocean in 1927 with his plane, the Spirit of St. Louis. The journey took only 33 hours, much less time than any ship of that day. His accomplishment earned him hero treatment, as well as a parade. He had shown the world that air travel was a viable means of transportation. Aviation enjoyed a golden age, with pioneers breaking various flight records. This period ended with the invasion of Poland by Germany and the start of World War II. Airplanes played a major role throughout the course of the war. Yesterday, December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. The United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked by naval and air forces of the Empire of Japan. Japan attacked Pearl Harbor with both air and naval forces, with the goal of crippling the United States specifically. Aircraft carriers were used for the first time with major success, providing a mobile runway for this unprecedented attack. Planes were equipped with both guns and torpedoes, which they dropped on low flying passes to sink the battleship fleet. As this excerpt from the movie Pearl Harbor shows, the Navy was totally unprepared for attack of this caliber. Since Japan controlled the air, they were able to attack the grounded American fighter planes and bomb the anti aircraft artillery guns. This major advantage caused the deaths of over 2,000 American soldiers, destruction of 300 aircraft, and the sinking of seven ships. This combination of air and naval attacks played a major role in the Pacific theater during the war. The world was again shown the power that aircraft had on warfare, but the civilian benefits hadn't yet developed. After the war ended, a few companies like Douglas and Boeing began transforming their bombers into passenger planes. Air travel appealed to the businessmen who could suddenly meet face to face with their customer. Although the cost of flying was still high, the speed advantages, combined with the general public fascination, made commercial airlines rapidly expand. Soon vacationers filled airports, wanting to see the world or visit relatives for the first time. In a society where leaving your county was a big deal only 50 years ago, the ability to leave the country garnered mass appeal. 
The network of transportation that existed in cities from subways and highways now grew to include these new skyways. Even today, the world is dependent on the ability to fly, both for military supremacy and civilian lifestyle. Flight 209, you are cleared for takeoff. Roger. Huh? LA departure frequency 123.9. Roger. Huh? Request vector. Over. What? Flight 209, clear for vector 324. We have clearance, Clarence. Roger, Roger. What's our vector, Victor? Our radio clearance, over. That's Clarence, over. Over. Roger. Huh? Roger, over. What? Huh? Who?